Hi everyone, I am Bala Kuteti, part of North America Cloud Specialist Team, and we specialize in moving data platform and analytics workloads to OCI. In this video, we are going to see how full stack disaster recovery service in OCI helps us to orchestrate the switchover and failover for OAC. Before we go into the demo, let's discuss how the disaster recovery process for OAC is set up. For setting up the disaster recovery for OAC, we have followed technical paper available in Help Center and also referred Oracle blog. We have used an OAC public instance on Oracle Cloud. We have taken reference architecture from Architecture Center for creating the disaster recovery for OAC. You can download the reference architecture from here. Let's discuss the architecture provided. You can replicate the similar kind of architecture in OCI for DR setup. Here you are seeing the deployment architecture we have used with a public OAC instance, ADW with autonomous data card, object storage with a native replication, and a compute instance. On OCI, a cross-region based DR is set up. The regions selected are primary and standby. Let me explain what is deployed in a primary region. I have made use of the OEC public instance. Perform one-time initial tasks of OEC environment such as provisioning the instance, setting up the vanity URL, SMTP server settings, configure the data sources using the private access channel or remote data gateway, etc. The autonomous data warehouse in primary region is running as a primary database. In OCI console, we have a feature to provision peer database using the cross-region autonomous data card. We have created a single VCN in each region with internet gateway, dynamic routing gateway, and a service gateway. Internet gateway used for internet-based connections into the VCN. Service gateway is used for connectivity to the Oracle service network. Dynamic routing gateway is used connectivity from on-premise and also remote peering connections between the regions. Users can access both OCI regions using the IPsec VPN or Fast Connect to connect on-premise resources. We have created two public subnets, one private subnet in each region. One for OAC public service, one for the Baston host service, and one for autonomous data warehouse service. To have a secure networking, you can create these subnets as private. Each of these subnets is equipped with route tables and security lists. Now moving on to the standby region. We have created a similar network in standby region like primary. Remote pairing connection is created between subnet siders of both regions using the dynamic routing gateway. It is very important to note that OEC service not yet part of full stack DR. You can orchestrate only the steps involved in the DR process in a single click DR execution. In addition to what we discussed, here is the reference architecture for you using the OEC in private subnet. As an OEC private instance, it cannot be accessed directly from the internet you have to use the public load balancer to access it. For additional protection, use the web application firewall, which is on top of the load balancer. You create an object storage bucket in one region using an object storage replication process that will be replicated to the bucket in other region. Vice versa, you will create buckets. You will specify the bucket names as variables in the scripts so that latest backup is restored when needed. To provision OAC in the console, navigate to the Analytics and AI, Analytics Cloud, Create Instance. When it comes to the OAC, you see OAC instance we have taken here as a primary. OAC instance has vanity URL configured. As OAC is a public instance, you will have the public IP address here. Public IP addresses need to be enlisted with the Internet Registrar. 
Connect to the on-premise data sources using the data gateway. Install the data gateway agent on the on-premise server and register the agent with both the regions. Alternatively, you could use private access channel as well. When you are accessing the OAC through a vanity URL, you can verify the OAC IP address, go to the browser developer tools and network tab and the header section will show the IP address. OAC instance in standby region will be on pause mode. Autonomous database in primary region configured with the autonomous data guard. This will create the standby database in secondary region. The standby database continuously gets updated with the changes from the primary database. Take one compute instance in the primary region. The scripts will be stored and executed from here. This compute instance will be added as a member in the DR plan group. This instance will be automatically moved to the secondary region in case of switchover or failover happens. You can consider using the Oracle functions to perform serverless operations. When it comes to the object storage buckets, create a replication policy for the bucket in the primary region. Select the destination region as the secondary region. In the resources section, go to the retention rules, create a time bound a rule for snapshot backups. It is your choice how many days you want to retain the snapshot backups. When you try the switch over and switch back, one of these steps is changing the DNS records. Type A record value must be changed to the primary instance IP. Note that changed IP with records take up to 10 minutes to propagate over the internet. Check the DNS propagation. Now, moving on to the full stack disaster recovery setup and orchestration.